The Optics intern Miriam Herzog and I arrived at the Minneapolis DFL convention around 5 p.m. At that time, delegates were waiting for the second ballot to be counted. I look forward to seeing the results for all of us, so it's going to be really interesting. There's a good chance voters will see a lot of candidates in the ballot in November because there's no incumbent. Add to that, this is only the second time the Minneapolis mayor's race will be using ranked choice voting, where citizens will be able to rank candidates. I like ranked choice voting. I'm in favor of it. I've always been in favor of that. And so I think this is a case where ranked choice voting could, this could be the first year where ranked choice voting is going to make an impact in a major race. It's going to be very interesting because I think people have a, are not all clear. I think the people at the convention get it. I mean, we tend to all be wonks who do this stuff all the time and are, are really, you know, kind of intrigued by it. But I think the general public is a little confused. I think they may think, from what I've found, that they have to rank all of them so that they may put people down that they wouldn't even ever want to have run their whatever, committee, their government. So I love it, though. I love the idea of it. Uh, and I think we can make it work, but I think people need much more education about it. And I, I'm a big, uh, you know, believer of uh, ranked choice uh, voting, uh, and the reason being is it's like it gives you know all of us the opportunity uh, not only to um, vote for a second candidate and a third candidate, but to also be able to rank our choices. You know, many times we are given a choice of one individual. But, you know, we see a lot of candidates that are really good candidates, and then we end up really at the end of the election kind of thinking like, oh, I wish I had voted for that person. I really didn't mind that person. Before the convention, people had already been talking about the possibility of no endorsement, which is what happened in the end. Earlier this morning when we got here, most people thought that we might actually not, we might walk away with no endorsement and not see an endorsement today. Majority of us would like to see an endorsed candidate out of here and, you know, and make our they worth the while on that as well, so. I wouldn't be surprised if there were no endorsement after this process, uh, but it's still kind of a difficult thing, you know, we've been here for many hours at this point and it's a little sad to see um, no endorsement come out of it. But again, I think that this sort of event is really about the conversations you have with people uh, about the issues that face our city, so. The lack of an endorsement, um, it, it hurts the little people. Uh, it hurts the people that, that cannot fund their own campaigns. It hurts the people that um, uh, it hurts the people that are looking for the DFL to provide leadership and to provide a a common vision for the future of Minneapolis and Minnesota. Um, you know that said, sometimes sometimes the struggle has to go a little longer. It has to go beyond one particular day, uh, and sometimes you have to take it to the people. But it would be very good, I think, if we had. Uh, a real endorsement today. Yeah, I'm okay with no endorsement. Uh, you know, for, for me, I like choice, and I'm not, I'm actually, I be, I'm participating in the DFL because I'm, a, I'm an urbanist, I'm a city guy, I love the city, and in Minneapolis, if you care about city politics, then you participate in the DFL. Now, I certainly agree with all the principles and values of the DFL, but for me, I think the best outcome in general is always for the people to have the most, to have the, the full rank set of choices, and so, you know, in the perfect world, there would be no DFL endorsement in the city politics, and we would allow the people to have the direct decision. So there may be such a thing as no endorsement. So, and we can live with that. You know, and then then the ranked choice voting really does come in in November, and so that's that's not a bad outcome either. I think it's perfectly fine if there's no endorsement. I'm totally fine with that. I think it's more important to have a candidate who, with strong progressive values be a viable candidate and if that means no endorsement and two candidates go forward one who's really progressive and one who is maybe not as progressive then so be it i'm totally fine with that with the sun setting the uptake team was heading out the door and we weren't the only ones the long day had taken its toll on the people i think it was it felt really disorganized this morning in that um we didn't really get to the first mayor ballot until three o'clock and people had been here since seven in the morning and um I think, I think we can improve on that. Uh, I really think we need to. I think that if the DFL wants to engage the people of Minneapolis and be relevant in the future, especially with uh, a lot of candidates running to the general election in the wards that don't have the endorsement, then they're going to need to speed up the process for future years. But, as Randy Gertz reminds us, 
participate. <laughs> That's the most important thing. If you're not out there, nothing's going to change. It's not going to change unless you do something. And I know going out and spending a few hours on a Saturday afternoon might seem like uh, something you don't want to do, but what's the cost if you don't? For the uptake, this is Halili.